The National Housing Accord facility has aspirational plans to provide 10,000 new affordable housing dwelling for frontline workers. However, Build Skills Australia has identified that there is a need for 90,000 tradespeople in the next three months. How can this demand be met uh, if there's insufficient housing? Mm. Uh, Cameron, this is a really interesting one because we've got pretty high immigration numbers at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, I don't think anyone would dispute that. The government says they're going to go back down, but mm -hmm. at the moment. And yet we've got this the shortage of a particular kind of worker we need. Oh, have we got the mix wrong? Uh, a, a couple of things in response to your question. Firstly, the immigration outcome is a policy choice, and I'd be very interested to hear from, from the panel about that, considering we're all talking about supply and ignoring the demand. But on the, on the, the skilled trades, look, we in the 2010s built a record number of dwellings, so I'm not sure that that is the case right now. We have actually been, in the last three years, using monetary policy to, to slow the economy and stop us building homes. So I think we're, we're missing this fundamental uh, sort of economic issue at play that we want to slow the economy by putting interest rates up. And the main way that happens is to lower housing construction at the same time open the, open the borders, essentially, and have high immigration. So I'd be interested to hear more from, from the elected politicians of how how they see that fitting together. Well, Andrew Bragg, you mentioned immigration numbers in your first answer. Mm. What do you think the immigration numbers should be? Well, I mean, it's going to be very hard for us to house our children if we're having... For every four people we bring in, we only build one house, and that's what we're doing at the moment. Uh, but I think thematically here, taking those two last questions, I mean, it's also going to be very hard to build the houses if we demonise the building, construction and property development sector. I mean, all that leaves is then the government to build the houses, which is what the Greens want, um, or we'll the super funds, the <laughs> <laughs> right? which is, which, which is what Labor want. I mean, Labor want the super funds and the foreign fund managers to build the houses. The Greens want the government to own all the houses. And we want the no. people to own the houses. And you need... Andrew, you know... And you need... Well, Hang you on do. A minute, yeah, wait, you want the wait, government wait, to build the houses. Every single house. We already built yeah, houses. Yeah, you want the government to build the houses. That's your policy. I can talk about the policy, let, but it's let, not yeah, everyone's... Let Andrew agree with Matt here. But, but, the, but the point <laughs> is that how... This are you is going to get, get uncomfortable. <laughs> Continue, Andrew. But the point is, how are you going to get the people to own the houses without a private market, without the builders and the construction sector and the, and the property managers? You need them. So, are you in favour of, of the, what is it, 90,000 tradespeople coming in to do well, it? Well, the only reason that we don't have enough tradespeople, I mean, one of the reasons is because Labor have closed off the visas for foreign tradespeople because their mates at the unions told them That's to close right. it off. That's just not right. So, well, so hang on a minute. We do have a, a, a high number of... Um, the high number of immigrants coming to the country at the moment. Labor has made announcements about trying to change that direction. But there is a shortage of tradespeople. Why? So, <laughs> one of the challenges is we need to train more tradespeople. So, fee-free TAFE has, as it's one of its priority areas... Yeah, but I'm talking areas. about now. People ready to build houses now. Absolutely. So, we've had 20,000 uh, construction workers go through fee-free TAFE. Uh, and, and last year, we brought in around 10,000 skilled, uh, skilled migrants to work as construction workers. And there's a strong Australian history for this. The Snowy Mountains Scheme is an exercise in bringing in builders from overseas. Sure. Uh, 10,000 so doesn't seem enough for the number that's needed, though, right? We need to, we need to keep on bringing in uh, migrants who are targeted at skills shortage. The genius of the Australian Migration Scheme and the reason it's historically had strong popular support is that people are being brought in not to supplant existing workers but in order to fill skills shortages. Migration is coming down to... In the, down next year, it'll be around half the level it was when we came to office. Uh, when we came to office, we had a system which Martin Parkinson, the former Head of Prime Minister and Cabinet, said was broken. Uh, we set about rebuilding that system, making sure we got the settings right, making sure that the people who came in were filling skills shortages. OK. And we do understand so the importance of getting those workers. Clarify. Do you think... You said 10,000 last year. Do you think that number has to rise? Uh, certainly, we want to bring in as, as many of those skilled workers as the industry says we, says we need. But we the industry's have... saying that 90,000 short to get 
to, to actually build the stuff we need to build. So will you bring those people? My in? first priority, Patricia, would be to train Australians to do the job. But uh, obviously there's a lag effect and there's a housing crisis now. This is the issue, isn't there's, it? There's going to be a lag in both of those. My priority would be to be training Australians to do the job. And there's other solutions we need to focus on at the same time. So Ed Husick brought the building ministers together last Friday to look at modular homes. Uh, Brendan O'Connor has been bringing the skills ministers together. Mm -hmm. uh, and the housing ministers have gotten together mm -hmm. seven times since the last election. Uh, let's be clear, for the last five years of the coalition government, the House, state and territory housing ministers never got convened once. OK, well, We've got on that, on this. today there was a housing ministers meeting, in fact, on this very fund. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with how the Commonwealth is handling this? I'm happier, but no, uh, I mean, I have to say, I um, love my comrade here uh, on the panel, <laughs> but I'm asking for more from the Commonwealth. And, you know, look, from a state perspective, no question we have to do more. No question we have to do more at the state level. And I'm not trying to shirk responsibility for the states when it comes to contributing our portion of the work that has to happen. But New South Wales, for every dollar we send to the Commonwealth in GST, we get 87 cents back. We've had our infrastructure funding cut. Um, you know, we're struggling to get our fair share in health and education. And housing is core infrastructure. So what more do you want on housing, Rose? We want to see the National Housing and Homelessness Agreement double its contribution from the Commonwealth to the state. Now, that is not... That is not... That is not suggesting that the states don't also have to do more. I'm not saying... So, so not, do you also double your contribution? We have to lift as well. Absolutely. You double it's it a, like you expect the Commonwealth 50 -50 to? It's a 50-50 contribution. OK, and did you raise that today? Absolutely. And what did. happened? No, it was a good... We got a good hearing from Minister Collins. We don't have a funding envelope from the Commonwealth yet. I'm sure Andrew and Jim are working on that at the <laughs> moment. Um, no pressure. But the reality is, you know, Vertical fiscal imbalance, we can talk wonky, it's Q&A. Most of the revenue is raised by the Commonwealth. That's the reality. Okay. Yes, the states have So how much lift. is currently you, uh, being talked about and what would you like it to be? Look, when, no, we don't have figures yet, Patricia. Uh, we, we, you we, you, you we give me an today. idea. I just like ideas. No, we're, talking, we're talking billions. We're talking billions here. Billions of dollars need to be spent on this. And I, I make this point. State and Commonwealth governments don't bat an eyelid contributing billions of dollars to roads and rail and bridges and other forms of infrastructure. Why is housing viewed differently to other forms of infrastructure? It's poor infrastructure. So, we are talking... We are talking billions of dollars. OK. Cameron, do you think that would be a good investment? I, I'm not 100% clear what you, you mean. Are you going to build houses? Absolutely. We, oh, are, we, we build houses like now. Sounds a lot like what I know. Yeah. I mean, there are elements of the <laughs> Greens policy. I want to say, Max, you don't need to set up a federal agency to deliver housing. Yeah. We've got some for you in the States, mate. Yeah. We're ready to go. But you're not building any. I mean, uh, like, can I just... Sure. We're not can building I, enough. Sure. Can I jump in? Yes, can please, please, jump in? please, 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 please. Let me jump in. Stuff. All right, this conversation is up here. Good public policy <laughs> is formed on the basis of the experiences of people on the ground. All right, you want to talk about the rental crisis. If you are a young person, you cannot get into the rental market. Uh, if I could use Alice Springs as an example, always easiest for me. You're going up against two or three people people who might be, if you're a family, you're renting against two or three professionals in a house who will outbid you every single time you try and get in. If you're a young person in your 20s and you're emerging into your job, you've got no chance of getting in.